Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Thank you for tuning into the Dean Show. All right, today we're going to be talking about a very important topic. All of the topics are so important because during every show, most of the shows, we keep stimulating a person to think, to think and ponder, to get away from the rat race of life, to stop and ponder what's my purpose in life, why am I here? Where am I going when I die? Death is a reality. Avoiding it is not going to make it go away. So you kind of put a hold on all the entertainment and now you come to the more serious issues. Talking about God, the Creator, doing good deeds, what are good deeds, how to accomplish paradise. Well, that's infinity. You live forever. But now it has to be based on proof and evidences. So God Almighty, He has sent evidences with all these messengers that He sent through time. They all came, A, with a simple message. Avoid worshipping false gods, men, women, money, this, that, and the other that are part of the creation, and only worship the one who created you, the one God. And they all came with proofs and evidences. And the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with evidences and proofs. But now the interesting things, we've covered this in other shows. He came with the Quran, verbatim word of God, scientific facts, prophecies, and all these other things. But now we have... Him, God Almighty, has left remnants, evidences, in the Bible actually. Yes, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also prophesied in the Bible. And that evidence we're going to be giving you today here on The Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. This is The Dean Show. 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 Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Wa alaikum assalam, look at me, peace be unto you too. How are you? How are you, Shay? Oh, it's good to see you again. Brother. Likewise, likewise. You have your own section at thedeanshow.com. People can go there and see some of the other shows that we've done. We've covered a lot of evidences and proofs to show indeed that Islam is a way of life from no other but the creator of the heavens and earth. And one of those was the scientific miracles in the Quran, you know, all the different historical facts, all the different facts and not fiction that one cannot come to any other conclusion that this Qur'an is indeed from the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is the ultimate proof that if anyone wants to know, they just have to open up this book and read and ask the one who created them, God Almighty, to guide them. But now the interesting part, and that is what makes this topic so interesting, that some people would think, okay, Bible, that's for the Christians and you know, the Old Testament, the first five books for the, for the Jewish people. And how do you get Muhammad in there? And how are you using it as a proof? Was he really in the Bible? Are there evidence pointing that he is a prophet that's coming, that's in the Bible? Is this something that you're pulling a fast one on us, or is this the ultimate truth? We're not pulling any fast ones. And actually, if you go back to your books, you'll find out that these are the actual facts and truth, inshallah. We'll start with the journey. Let's start with the journey that the prophecies actually, that is mentioned, that there will be this man that is coming from Paran, that will be coming from Timan, and we'll, take about the, we'll talk about these two specific uh, words, that where is this place? And where is that actual, uh, the bedrock of Islam? Where did the migration take place? If you go to Habakkuk 3.3, you'll find out that actually it says God, the, His guidance comes from Timan, to the mount from the Paran. You'll find out that these two names specifically, will have to cross-reference them. In the dictionary of the explanation of the Bible, these are Christian scholars that actually will tell you this Paran. Paran is actually Mecca, this area called Mecca, that... Paran in itself, in another language, in Arabic, which is close to the, the Jewish uh, language, the Hebrew, which is called Faran. Faran meaning the two that they fled. And who actually fled in that area was Hagar, the mother of uh, Ishmael, the son of Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him. And they settled in that area. So the Bible says that um, that person, the guidance of God, will come from that area. Born in that area, settled in that area, as Ishmael was the prince of Arabia, and he's even is mentioned in another that sons of, uh, of Ishmael is Kedar, and he was actually settled in that area. So the proof is there that they will come from that area. And uh, migration. They actually talked about it when it says the area that was going to be Timan. Timan is actually proven in, again, some of the, uh, the description or the, some of the dictionaries. It says it's north of Medina. Another uh, interpretation says Tima. Tima is also mentioned in the Bible, and if you go back and find out, it will be just north of Medina. 
So now we have a source where this person is going to come and where this person is going to end up. So let us cross-reference. Who is this person that was coming from? Paran, meaning in this area, Mecca. And the Bible mentions sometimes Basha or Bekka. Bekka in Arabic those comes from also those who cry a lot, which is also another name for Mecca. So we now know the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was born in Mecca. No one denies that fact. And he is a descendant of Ishmael, may peace be upon him. And when he migrated, he migrated to Medina after he was driven out, being persecuted and so on. And the story is long. It's not our topic now. We won't be going into it. But when we know that this incident specifically mentioned in the Bible, that that person, the God's guidance, will come from there, Paran, and we're going to, to, to Timan, the mount. When we know that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, actually used to go Ghar Hara, and Ghar Hara was actually in that part of that mount. So the proof is there that he used to go there, he came from there, and he's going to Tima or Timan. In uh, two narrations actually in, uh, indicate the same place which is north of Medina. As a matter of fact, the Jews knew this very well, and they migrated to Medina specifically for that purpose, because they knew this was a place that the prophet that was waiting, they were waiting for is going to migrate for that. They used to go and actually uh, scare the Aus al Khajas, these are the two tribes of that used to live in Medina, says there was a prophet coming up, and we, when he comes up, or when he appears, we will follow him and we will kill you, and so on. That's what the children of Israel were saying to the others. Absolutely. And why would they leave their beautiful, green, luscious uh, place of uh, Israel, land, and they come to uh, the, sand, the sandy desert of, uh, of Medina, where there's nothing there? They were expecting uh, the Messiah. Or they were expecting the Messiah. They were expecting this prophet that they were actually waiting for. Long time ago, even some of the people, when they used to go to the... Uh, and Medina, they wanted to fight these people. He says, you will not be able to beat these people because this is a place where a prophet is going to migrate to. Another place in Isaiah, he says now, the burden of Arabia. What is he talking about? He says, this Arabia will carry the burden. Burden of what? Carrying this message of the, of the Quran, of Islam. And he says that, believe it or not, there is another prophecy that uh, people will come on asses, which is every student in, uh, in, the Bible, in the Sunday Bible classes will tell you that this was Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. But there was another prophet that will have the two horsemen, who says, says they will see him on camels. So who was that person that actually traveled on camels from this area to, from uh, Paran, which is Mecca, to uh, Timan or Tima, which is Medina, except Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And believe it or not, the scholars will tell you that Jesus, may peace be upon him, never went to Paran. He never went to Mecca in his lifetime. So it could not have been uh, uh, Isa, alayhi salam. Here they're talking about asses, the uh, donkeys. The donkeys, when he took the, uh, Isa, yeah. may peace be upon him, took the donkeys, but Prophet says he took the camels, camels, which was actually mentioned in the Bible, that that is a prophecy that will come. And of course, we know that this is just the beginning and we know that uh, the migration was actually mentioned, that they will be guided. And there is a proof that that man will be coming to Medina. And believe it or not, the revelation will come in, uh, in Isaiah 29, 19 to a man that he will be delivered. The book will be delivered to the prophet who, he says, he says, read, I pray thee, three. He says, what do I read? He says, I am not learned. It's, this, says in, this is in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in Isaiah 21, 29, 12. If you can go back and check, you will find out this is a book that was mentioned, be taken by a prophet, and this prophet will be told, read. And he will say, what do I read? I'm not learned. And who is known for that? Is actually only Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is mentioned in the Quran, is mentioned in the Bible, when Gabriel, may peace be upon him, came down to tell him, read, recite. First words that was mentioned in the Quran, was actually says, Ma ana what do I read? I am not learned. So so it coincides exactly the, the uh, prophecies in the Bible, coincides exactly with the source of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, birth, where he was going to migrate, how he will take, and there's so much more, of course, to share that we will have after the break. We're going to be right back with more here on the Dean Show. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.
سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر الله Show us the way to Allah's grace This is the deed, deed of Islam 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 It's a way of life brought to us by the messenger, best of mankind. Show us the way to Allah's grace. This is the deen, deen of Islam. This is the deen, deen of Islam. Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about Muhammad, peace be upon him, who's the last and final messenger sent to mankind. The proofs that indeed we know that he was a messenger of God, and we have covered so many of the different proofs and evidences, but now we're going and dipping into the Bible to show even from there that those signs, the evidences are even there. So can you continue on where you left off? Of course. Even if you go to Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, you will find out that uh, God Almighty was talking to Moses, may peace be upon him. He says, I will raise him up to be like unto thee, a prophet like unto thee. From their brethren, he will speak in my name. He will say, I will put it into his words. You see? So we'll find out. Let's cross-reference. Who is this prophet that God Almighty was talking to, Moses, may peace be upon him, from 18.18, 18, Deuteronomy? People usually say it's Jesus. But we say, was Jesus, may peace be upon him, like unto Moses? Moses, may peace be upon him? Or was it Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him? And if you go into the, the evidence and the, the, to compare who was closer, you'll find hands down that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was like Moses. He was a king of his time. He was accepted as a prophet, un unlike Jesus, may peace be upon him. He was not accepted by his people. He was actually born of a mother and a father, just like uh, Moses, unlike Isa, alayhi salam, was born miraculously, as we believe him to be, born of a Virgin Mary, n immaculate conception, no male intervention, and the way that actually ended, according to them, he was ascended to heavens, or some other people, other faith, they believe he was uh, crucified. Of course, as Muslims, we don't believe in that, because God Almighty says, they killed him not, nor crucified him not. But just to compare, he was, he was married. Jesus Christ was not married. Muhammad and Moses, may peace upon him, were married. They had children. Jesus Christ, may peace upon him, did not have a, a children. And so many other ones that there is absolutely no comparison whatsoever except that one. But he also said their brethren. Who is their brethren? Because we know that the, uh, uh, Abraham, may peace upon him, is the patriarch of the three monotheist religion you know, Christianity, Judaism, and, and Islam. And he had two children. Of course, among them is Isaac and, uh, and Ishmael, may peace be upon him. So when we say the brethren, meaning the brethren from Isaac, the Jews, and the brethren from Ishmael is the Arabs. He was mentioned as the prince of the Arabs. And from that is the descendant of uh, Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, which coincides with everything that has been prophesied. Not to mention that even Isa, السلام, when he said, I have so many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, I know it's mentioned as a comforter or the spirit of truth or the, or the uh, parasite on all that. We're not going to go into the differences, even if the Latin or Aramaic language and so on. But we'll just take the evidence. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is expedient for me to let me go so I can send them. So what, who was he talking to? 
He will teach you all the truth. He will guide you to, what, to, the, to, the, uh, to the righteous path. And He will do all these great things for you. Change people around and, and, and. Who was that? When you talk to the, uh, the Christians, they will tell you this was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amazingly enough, when you cross-reference this, he says that you will find out that Jesus Christ, may peace upon him, said that he, uh, you will have to let me go in order for me to send him. If I'm not going, I can't send him. So that was a condition. But you go back in the Bible, you'll find out that even... Holy Spirit, what well, was John the Baptist was two years ahead of he was a cousin and he was also in the womb and so on so he was there before Jesus made peace upon him so it could not be the, the Holy Spirit even if the Holy Spirit was there what did he teach you they will tell you nothing but this specific verse says he will teach you all these things he will guide you the truth and will guide you to all of that so who was that it could not be anybody else except Prophet Muhammad peace upon him because he said I will put my words into him so he says who speaks in the uh, in the, the words God Almighty says I will put my words into him only Prophet Muhammad peace upon him all the time Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of God that he speaks in the name of God the most merciful this most is how the Quran is recited correct so you say Kul say he is God one and only this is what the Bible you're referencing to the Bible and then the Quran that's right because yeah. God Almighty says to Moses I will put my words unto him he will not speak of his own as a matter of fact the Quran says he does not speak of his own whims and desires it is only revelation is bestowed unto him yeah. so all the evidence is actually indicating that that verse in the 1818 in Deuteronomy that Moses may peace be upon him was told by Prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will have another prophet raised from the brethren meaning Isaac and Ishmael and descendant of Ishmael of course is Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him in the place that we, we said from power coming to Timan from Mecca to Medina the proof is there and the evidence is uh, is abundant that's that's amazing because even this when God Almighty is saying say the Prophet Muhammad didn't leave this out verbatim he said what the Creator told him to say even these things he didn't leave out قل. it's called قل say yeah Muhammad he actually said say is the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is he mentioned by name anywhere in the Bible he is mentioned by name in the Song of Solomon 516 even though that some of the people will actually tell you you know Muhammadim you know it is it is true and uh, but but he was talking about uh, some love story his lips are sweet to uh, hear you the daughter of Israel and so on no regardless he is actually mentioned by name he is mentioned by name. It's like if you if you punch in uh, if you punch in you actually translate the Hebrew into this and you will find out exactly what it's mentioned. And I've actually talked to a rabbi. This is mentioned by name, and he is. They are known. They are known for that. That he even uh, God Almighty uh, mentioned that in the Quran that he will be called in the Quran says Ahmed. And some of the people try to actually coincide with that. Whether it's uh, it's the case or not, it is mentioned by name. Literally, it is true in the con in the context of uh, what story that they, they say it's a, a different context, why would he be saying it? But he's actually literally mentioned by name in the Song of Solomon, is 516, is there. But now we go further. When we find out that even uh, Ishmael, may peace be upon him, was promised by God Almighty that you will have the greater nation. You see from the Isaac and Ishmael, by God Almighty promised, that Ishmael will have the greater nation. Who is the greater nation that is the descendant of Ishmael except Muslims? And who is the only one that actually came in and changed this whole world around and told you what to do, told you not what to do? His life was uh, looked by a microscope. Every aspect, everything he told us to do. Islam is a way of life. We have everything. There's utterance, a way to follow, etiquettes and matters. From the day you wake up in the morning till the day you sleep, it coincides again with what is mentioned. In the, in the Bibles. Not to mention, of course, there are so many uh, things that are mentioned in the Bible regarding Prophet Muhammad, may peace upon him, in his migration, not only his migration, in some of the battles. In some of the verses in the Bible, it says those ill-equipped few beat the mighty men of Kedar. Who is Kedar? Is actually the second son of Ishmael, is mentioned in the Bible, that actually settled in the Paran, with the, the mountains with which mentioned is Mecca. And these were the people of Quraysh. And these were that children of Ishmael did not heed to the message. And Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, after he was driven out from Mecca to Medina, he came with only 313 really equipped people. They were not coming to fight, but the other ones came in with 900 and so close to 1,000 fighters. And they were coming to fight. 
And the Bible says that these ill few men beat the strong mighty men of the, the children of Gerar. This is the Bible saying The Bible is saying this. And if you go back and cross-reference, you'll find out that it's the first battle, which is the battle of Badr, where miraculously, by the blessing of God Almighty, God Almighty gave the ill few, which is 313 or 314, to beat those close to a thousand fighters that came to fight, even though these ones were only came back to take some what belongs to them, not to fight. But that is one. The other battle that was actually mentioned, believe it or not, was the Battle of Badr, uh, of Badl of Uhud. It was uh, when, uh, when the archers was mentioned and the, those were given the rights and uh, the strength will, will show on. Not to mention the 10,000 that was mentioned in the Bible. It will be in the Bible. In the Bible is mentioned that you will have 10,000 of righteous disciples. And which one is that? This is the 10,000 that came with Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, where? to go back to conquest of Mecca. And they were actually told, Idhabu antum tulaqa. Go, you're free. So everything that actually coincides with the numbers, with the place, with the stories, with the utterance, with the proof, is all belongs and points to Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back to finish off Muhammad in the Bible. Sit tight, I'm on the way. Islam prohibits killing of innocent human beings. Human life is precious. It's a way of life brought to us by the messenger, best of mankind. Show us the way to Allah's grace. This is the Deen, Deen of Islam This is the Deen, Deen of Islam Back here on the Deen Show, we're talking about Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was a messenger like Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah. They all came with the same message, worship one God, worship the creator of all that exists, do not worship what he created and obey the messengers. And the last and final message sent to mankind today is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. No more messages to come. And evidences are even in the Bible. But someone says, you know what, Shaykh, tell us, if you guys don't, do you believe in the Bible now? Is that the word of God? How are you taking this in evidence if this is not your holy book? If this is not the book that you believe is from God? What do we believe about the Bible? We believe in the Bible. We do believe there is in it, there is a word of God. And in it, there is a word of historian. And in it, there is a word of the prophet. And in it, there are certain things that's not befitting uh, to be in it. Uh, you know, if we go into this topic, it, it's big. But however, we take some of the evidence that actually coincides because God Almighty actually says, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ Bring your proof so we can cross-reference. From your own book, we say, look, it's in your own fingertips that you can actually see it. But people, when they have a preconceived idea or don't want to believe because they're holding on to a certain belief that this is their only salvation, they don't want to come with the, the rights that comes in with Islam, what to do, what not to do, they will actually let go. They don't want to believe. They just were told that to believe in certain things and that's your way of salvation. Why bother? Why do you have to go and to make your life difficult, you know, do and don'ts and restrictions and all that? But it's all for your own good. Because the difficult part about it, again, if you go back to Deuteronomy 18, 18 and up to 19, you'll find out that it's not really up to you. My brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, we were created for a reason. And God Almighty says, but he, the one that I'm sending, he says, if you do not hearken unto his message, that I will require it, meaning I will be revenging it. So it is not a choice. If you know the truth, and if you know the truth, you cannot turn a blind eye. Be honest with yourself, my dear brothers and sisters out there. And at least when you know the proof is there, is mentioned, and everything points to Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, in all aspects, with a lot more detail than most people thought, that you have to come back and face yourself. Save yourself in this life, so you'll have a better future. You will have a good life, and you'll have a better future. Just in a couple minutes that we have left, you have given the evidence that indeed, even the signs that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was coming, that he's the last and final messenger, is in the Bible. But this way of life that we live, Islam simply means to acquire peace by submitting yourself to the owner of peace, the one God. And a Muslim is one who does Islam. Prayer, praying to God, charity, the pilgrimage to Mecca, fasting. Is Islam in the Bible? If you look at it, if you eloquently explain 
Muhammad in the Bible, is the rest of the components of Islam, the facets of Islam, are they even in the Bible? Of course, everything that comes from the same source comes with the same things. We all know that uh, we believe in all the divine scriptures, all prophets and messengers, because they come from the same source, God Almighty. So if you look at the context of all the divine scriptures, you will find it is the same. You will find that the messages, you know, God Almighty is one. We know all the prophets and messengers preach there's only one God. There's only, only one way of life that turns around and changes these things. Where do they come from? There is no proof and we know that. It is not in the original Bible and how could all the prophets and messengers preach something else that is not actually there? That is God Almighty is divisive and so on. It doesn't make sense to anything. So God Almighty puts it back and that's why the Quran is called the criterion. The Furqan, the one that actually tells you on the end of a, a, you know, the factory line, it says this is right, this is not right, and so on. So we say that even then you'll find out that Jesus Christ, may peace upon him, when he prayed, he placed his, uh, his forehead to the ground. He prayed. He, was, he used to face a certain direction in the east, and he was actually used to fast, and so on. So everything, the Ten Commandments, everything is coincides, because it comes from the same source, God Almighty. So it doesn't mean that you'll have a terrible life. No, not the case. The case is that even Ali, may peace be upon him, and all the prophets and messengers, I mean the uh, the Habar and his family of prophets, may peace be upon him, what do you say? He says, a man comes up to me and says, you know, what if there's no, nothing in the hereafter? What happens? What if you guys just made yourself very difficult? You lowered your gaze, you didn't lie, you didn't steal, you fasted, you, you didn't drink, and you prayed, and you pilgrimage, and give your money to charity the poor? What if you, all these restrictions, and in the end you find out there was nothing? He says, if there was absolutely nothing in the end, at least I would have had a good life, good, righteous, wholesome life. But what if there is something in the end? Who would be the loss? And do you want to really take a chance? Of course not. This is amazing, amazing for any truth seeker who's sincere and wants to know the truth. The truth is there and the truth shall set you free. We started with peace. We end with peace. May God Almighty, the Creator, Allah reward you. Thank you, Shay. Pleasure as always. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And there you have it. More evidence upon evidence. Continue to come to the Dean Show and look at some of the previous shows we've done. Science, you want it? It's there. It's in the Quran. Facts, not fiction. The preservation of this book, the Quran, like no other book, has been recited for years and years, from 1400 years plus years, in the same way that we had it then, we have it today. Evaluate it, read it, call the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM to get a free copy of the Qur'an and to learn more, ask your questions, even your criticisms are welcome so we can have a healthy dialogue, but don't just sit there and wait for death to approach and then you've had your shot, it's over. Seek these questions, important questions, what's the purpose of life, why have I been created, why am I here, and who best to tell you but the one who created this whole universe and everything in it, the same God that Jesus called upon, that he prayed to, that's the God that we're calling you to call upon to ask for the guidance. Ask for the guidance, as we said earlier, the truth shall set you free. We'll see you next time here in the Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show.